Hey guys, um, it's Adam from Tetra Films, and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to create the motion tracked blood on the door that was in Perpetuum. So the first thing you're going to do is in After Effects is you're going to import your footage, and let me find it. A second. Okay, now that I have this imported, we're going to drag it into a new composition. Okay, so as you see, we can scrub through here. This is the um, original shot. It's the exact same one I used in Perpetuum, so it'll be pretty close. So now we have this in here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside Mocha. And I like to use Mocha because basically the After Effects track tracker is worth worthless for uh, complicated tracks like this one because it's um, out of focus and then it moves around a lot there's gonna be a lot of motion blur so I like to go and do um, mocha so second we're gonna uh, create a new project in mocha and we're gonna import the same clip so we gotta find it again there it is and it'll take a second to load especially on my computer because it's pretty slow and there we go it'll recognize all the settings it will put on the frame rate and you can click OK um, it's just telling me to overwrite it okay so now that we're inside of Mocha we're going to go to the first frame which yes it is already on the first frame and we're going to create a new X-Spline tool and basically jar, uh, the new X, the X-Spline tool is um, the track mat that you're going to place over your uh, clips to track it. It's basically a mask. So you're going to pick the uh, best point in your clip to track that has the highest contrast and doesn't go out of the frame because if it goes out of the frame it's not going to be able to track the whole thing. So I'm going to track around this door and right over Nick's face and maybe up on this cabinet a little and then just complete the uh, mat and we're going to track forwards and I will come back to you when this is done okay now that our track is done well I mean it's not completely done if you want to track forward from here you could but it's kinda of pointless cuz it's not gonna stay on the door um, but everything before that is tracked and that's what really matters so we're going to go to uh, as soon as my computer stops okay we're gonna go to export tracking data and we're gonna go to After Effects CS3 corner pen um, and supports motion blur CS3 and older dot text and we're gonna copy this to clipboard and you're basically done in Mocha now we're gonna go back to After Effects and we're gonna go to create a new alt, new null object sorry I can't speak okay as soon as my computer is done loading okay um, come on okay layer new null object and then you're just gonna hit uh, paste and that will paste the tracking data onto the null object so you have a perfectly tracked uh, null object to your door or whatever you're tracking in the scene so that's much more efficient and much more accurate than the After Effects tracker so you don't really need to look at the null and the next thing to do is create the blood so uh, I gotta import my blood assets from Action Essentials Okay, we're going to go to blood. I'm just going to import the whole thing. And we're going to open it. So now I found my blood asset and I am going to drag it onto the composition underneath the null because I just like to keep nulls on top usually. 
and just you know the standard position and uh, scaling that I need to do. So that's gonna be pretty small since the door is pretty small. So that seems about right. And now obviously it looks pretty crappy because it's not matched to the scene. So I'm gonna go to here and I'm gonna get a Gaussian blur and drop it onto the layer to match to the um, out of focus areas on the video and so I'm gonna set this since this is pretty out of focus the door I'm gonna set it to like 22 I think that's what I did uh, yeah that looks about right and I'm also going to parent it to the null before I forget and that looks about right right there and then to create the rack focus effect so that when it focuses from the back of Jacob over to the door, um, the blood needs to focus with it so it looks natural and it looks like it's actually there. So we're going to go forward until you see that it starts to start to shift focus. And okay, right about uh, here. And you're going to create a effect and you're going to create a keyframe for the blurriness and then go forward until you see that he is in focus uh, it doesn't have to be perfect since this is a tutorial so I'm just going to leave it here and then take it down to not all the way down because then it'll look unnaturally sharp so I usually go to about six Oh, that looks that looks pretty weird. So let's go to like seven. Okay, that looks about right. And next thing we're gonna do is add motion blur. So you gotta turn on motion blur in the composition settings and then add it there. So as you can see, we have so far we have a tracked blood stain to the door, which is what we want. And then. So that's what well, that's the uh, initial blood impact so far, and the next thing we're gonna do is create the uh, blood that he's sliding down. And since Action Essentials does not have an asset for that, we need to create our own. So we're gonna go to Layer, New, Solid, and use the uh, eyedropper tool to match up the reds. So let's go like about that. That looks about right, and that's fine. And then you're gonna get the mask tool and make sure the mask is set to uh, add and then just mask out a rough um, like line you can do two it looks kinda cool if you do two this doesn't have to be the world's best mask since it's gonna be, since it's gonna be pretty blurry and okay there we go so now we have our mask. I'm just going to go into the masks and lock it so that I don't screw up the mask so I don't get annoyed. And we're going to go over and scale it down to where it looks about right. Great. And then we're going to make it small so it doesn't go over his legs because it'll look pretty weird. Okay, right there. And then we are going to create another Gaussian blur on the uh, solid. Okay, so we have to go to the first frame and go to 22. I'm just going to take out, uh, we got to take out this one so that we can see where the keyframes are so we can get it perfectly matched so 22 and then to the next keyframe at 7 and we also have to motion track it so we got to parent the solid with the null and you can rename this if you want to like track just to make it uh, easier and that looks pretty weird 
Okay, so let's give it a little bit more blurriness. Oh yeah, since this is a composition, it's gonna take a lot of blur to get it um, matched up. So in future note, if you wanna make it a lot smaller than the actual composition, you can do that and it'll be less blur that you'll need. So right there looks about good. And then we're gonna go to the other keyframe and redo it, but you should need to do that if you're not stupid. Okay. Where is the other keyframe? All right, so gotta set it here. So turn on the stopwatch and then go back to here and take down the blurriness. And that looks pretty good. So right now we have the slide, the blood sliding down the door and the blood splat. And it's perfectly tracked to the door because it is paired with the null. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna select our two blood assets. We're gonna go to layer pre-compose or shift command C if you like shortcuts. And I'm gonna name it blood stain. And the, the reason you uh, pre-compose it is so that when you move it around, oh, yeah, when you move it around, you don't need to reposition uh, the two assets together. It'll just be uh, one, it's like one layer. Well, it is one layer because it's pre-composed. So it just makes it easier. And then once you add things, you can, if you wanna edit the actual blood hit, you can just go back into this composition and you can add stuff here and it'll stay where it is when you move it around in the other composition. So it just makes it faster and easier. And then you, uh, since most of the Action Essentials blood hits are pretty short, um, I'm just gonna see it ends right there after like five seconds, four seconds. So I'm just gonna duplicate the footage and drag it over. Or, actually wait, no, that's, that's stupid. Or you can make it easier where you go to layer, enable time remapping. Where is that? Where is that? There we go, okay. And then you can just drag the keyframes out to the end of the comp. So that way the blood hit will last the whole thing. That's actually way easier. So, now you are finished basically with this and now you can add a uh, color grade, but okay, you gotta reparent the pre-composed blood hit, apparently, okay, right there, okay. Now we're gonna go to where we feel that the track ends, which I'm pretty sure it is about right there. And this is a very unrefined version. Obviously it looks pretty crappy right now, but the one that I did in Perpetuum is um, much better. So you just gotta spend time on it. That's the whole thing with VFX, and or, or visual effects if you don't know what the acronym is. Is you just gotta spend time on it until it looks good. Like don't go in and like think that you know exactly what you're doing and you're gonna do a specific set and then you're gonna be done with it. You're gonna play around with the blur, play around with the settings until it looks good. This this shot, um, the blood hit, I've been doing this for what, like 10 minutes now. The actual shot in Perpetuum, I think I spent an hour or more on it, uh, just tweaking the settings and obviously there was a little bit more blood on it and it looked a lot better. So you just gotta play around with that. So drag the um, the project window until you feel that your track is over and then you're going to render it out so that's pretty much done and then you can send it off to your editor so thanks for watching uh, bye